You can heckle from the back, yeah, well, front, I don't mind. Okay, I think we're shop on time. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm the facilitator for this session. I'd like to introduce uh, our talented operations director, Brian Laid, who will be talking how a profession can attract more talent, especially more new talent. Indeed, indeed. I'm not mic'd up because you can hear me. Um, it's just being recorded. So um, hopefully this is going to turn into a discussion, otherwise it's going to be really short. <laughs> but I'm going to try and give you some stuff to enable that discussion, which is broadly my view of what's going on. And can we attract more talent or not? I don't know. Hopefully we'll come up with the answer right here today. Um, so I'm just going to go a little bit about me for those of you who don't know me. Um, my view of the authoring world it may be right, it may be wrong. Then we can have that discussion. But I think it's important for me anyway that this isn't actually about the ISTC. And that's just the body which we're here under. It's about how do we attract more as a profession rather than the ISTC. I think discussions might turn to the ISTC, but you never know. Maybe they won't. Um, so first of all, I'm not a writer, and I always put up there first, so if you see any typos, I'm not a writer. <laughs> so, um, I've done a load of things, worked for RS Components for a long, long time. Um, most of those jobs were there. Um, I managed a team that re wrote, rewrote the RS catalogue, for those of you who know it, which is a rather big beast, and I hired 3DI to help out back in 2006. And when I left there, I thought they were so good. I phoned Paul Ballard and said, give me a job. And here I am. Um, but I've, I manage a lot of projects, basically, so I manage writers. That's what, that's what I do. So um, if you see any typos, tough. Okay, just a little, little <laughs> it's kind of relevant. I actually had a, an email on Monday um, from a guy who called Mo Alley. If you ever come across a writer called Mo Alley in the future, this is where his career started. He's still at university. Um, and he's got well, one more year to do, but give him his credit, he's, he's trying to work out what a career he can do. So um, anyway, he, he emailed me loads of questions about stuff. What is a writer? What does it do? How much do you earn? All this so I gave him a call. First thing I always ask people like that is, how the heck did you find out about technical writer? What, what <laughs> yeah, it's not normal. You know? So he said, in all seriousness, with a poker face, he said, I googled jobs suitable for introverts. <laughs> There it is, that's what he found. <laughs> so, there you go. Uh, I don't know, that's just a screen grab, so I can't show you, but feel free to Google it yourself on business, was it business news or something like that? Um, so that's one way into the profession, but maybe we should make a flip chart of advertised to introverts. Anyway, what's the issue? Um, from a business point of view, from a 3DI point of view, we've generally just seen last year, year and a half, it's been really difficult to find good people um, for either putting in permanent roles or contract roles. It's just been really, really difficult. If you go back three or four years, it wasn't too bad. It was, I think the recession was happening, there was a lot of movement, a lot of CVs flying around. Since then, really difficult. Does anyone agree with that? Yeah? yeah? That's a good starting point. From my point of view, um, being responsible for operations at 3DI, is finding people for my projects <laughs> that I'm having an issue with. Um, you know, we're growing massively, and we've had a core of good people, and we're trying to grow that, and trying to grow the core of good people is really difficult. And we've had... Sorry, again. Two? <laughs> okay. I, I, am, I don't understand this concept of not finding, not being able to get talents... Surely the problem is you can't get the talent at the price that you're willing to pay. That is the, the, that's definitely an element of truth to that. Certainly, you, know, you get a lot of good people who want a lot of money um, and certain projects or, or our own budget, if we're taking them ourselves, we just can't afford to pay those kind of prices. Um, in a competitive environment as well, where you're trying to put together a cost, um, you know, gross profit analysis on any <coughs> project, you know, sometimes you just don't... I know very good authors, I'd love to put on certain projects, I can't do it, I, it's too expensive. So one of the issues is finding good people who don't need such a high wage in some respects. Sure, one of the issues is educating clients to pay a realistic price for the top talent. Absolutely, the absolutely. But if the client doesn't... Come, hold on a minute. <laughs> if, in my experience... No, th 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 for those of you who don't know... <laughs> 
three, you know, clients come to 3DI and ask, can, can you help us out with this documentation project? And to be honest, the, 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 you can sell value, but some people don't want to listen. They just want the bloody user manual, and they don't want to pay a premium for it. Um, so you know, it's just a competitive environment. But yeah, we'll keep those thoughts when we have the discussion, absolutely. Sorry, there's some more. So just quickly around the room, I quickly just want to know why you're here and what you're feeling the pain of. <laughs> I find that um, virtually everybody who come, you know, I, I've. Okay, um, there's a not a shortage of people, but they're all my age or older. Mm. I I I've interviewed people for roles, you know, for for several roles, be it contractor or permanent, and I don't see any talent coming along. There is talent there at the moment, but the talent I have employed in the last couple of years will be retiring in the next five to ten years and then there's nothing after that. Yeah, I don't certainly know. an issue. <laughs> Anyone else got yeah, particular? I've just gone through a horrendous four months. I left my previous company due to personal problems with wife and health problems. And then I tried to get back on the wagon and I tried contracting You've even had my CV, haven't you? Yeah, and, sure, uh, yeah. I tried contracting hundreds and hundreds of different agencies. They've all got my CV. They keep sending me emails. Can you come and go for this job? As soon as you apply for the job, you know exactly, straight away, they're looking for a young superstar coming straight out of university or somebody who's just gone into technical authoring, yeah. hasn't got the right qualifications. They just want somebody who can pay the BS. Yeah. Companies, I managed to get an interview for, as soon as I walked in, you could tell straight away. They could see this knackered old git walking through. <laughs> They're not going to want to employ somebody like me. And it does work. It does happen. Believe me, I've been in lots and lots of situations over the last four months. And I could quite easily... Yeah, I've, I've seen that as well. I've seen clients come to 3DI, kind of, although it's kind of illegal. <laughs> they kind of say, we yeah. kind of want someone like that, you know, at a certain age. Ever since then, they can now tell by the other means. You know, you've been in contracting for 20 odd years, I know somebody's going to be quite old and knackered. This is his second career. Right? So they get discounted more or less straight away. Mm. Okay, well, that's something we can capture in a bit when we go through that. Anyone else got any particular? I'm uh, between jobs and looking at technical authoring or something like it as a second career. My, my background has been content management, really, running a content management team within, within a publishing company. And I just thought that, um, always having always done documentation, so I'm, I'm at the point of just sort of thinking, what's in it for me? Is it something I can... Right. So I'm looking for a way in. Um, oh, well, my next slide yeah. leads in nicely to that, but, but I suppose I should say, sorry, sorry I, what occurred to me is, because I have a 14-year-old daughter... And um, they're at the stage, you know, inviting people in to talk about cr potential careers. Mm. And it occurred to me from people I've met that um, it's a fantastic job for somebody who, you know, enjoys writing, in English literature, linguistics students. But I don't think anyone <laughs> has heard about it. I only heard about it because I have a friend yeah. who's a writer who knew mentioned the, the institute. Yeah. But um, I wouldn't have known about it otherwise. I mean, I've, I've always, in, in all my life, I've, all my working life, I've been writing stuff for small yeah. companies, in small companies, but yeah. never knew there was a profession around it. So. Absolutely, visibility. We'll come on to that. So this is my very simplistic view of industry. 80-20, 90-10, not sure what it is. But I've certainly sat in a big company and then come across the words of t technical author and go, what are I never heard of them. Technical writer, what's this? What? what? I, ha I had a, a 25 content editors working for me. Never heard of the actual term technical author or technical writer. So I think... Now, 80% of all the companies out there you'll walk into and say, technical author, they go, what? Never heard of it. Someone does writes a document. And then maybe 10, 20% do. And pretty much, you know, we could sit here and probably list all the companies that <laughs> do hire technical authors significantly in the UK. Virgin, uh, you know, the normal ones. On top of that, I think there's... It's, it's what you were talking about just now. In the bigger scale of things, you may not be able to see this, but every company's producing documentation, clearly obviously, but they're being done by anyone. I've met a QA manager who's responsible for the manuals. 
um, the salesperson, I've seen them been writing the processes, the project manager, the scientist, the marketing person, and then all the variations around technical author, online help developer, information developer, content editor, DTP specialist, you see job adverts for these all the time. But actually, our world seems to revolve around technical author, technical writer and documentation manager. They're the ones you find typically, and I'm talking generically, in here. And actually, that is, uh, ISTC is only a small subset of that lot. So we're very, very small. And I think there's, start, we started talking about this before there was a very um, avid uh, discussion on the ISTC discussion group about, and it turned into more, how can ISTC attract more talent? And someone said, there's probably only about five to 7,000 technical authors in the UK, something like that, who, who would recognize that on their CV? And I think that's probably about <coughs> right, actually, my view anyway. But in this world here, companies don't recognize technical authoring, technical author, technical writer. So there's no roles, therefore there's no opportunity. Over here, if, a, if someone manages to land in here, which is what you're trying to do now, you know, that company, you know, recognise it, and the person enjoys it, because I've seen people who do technical authoring don't enjoy it, and plenty aren't very good at it. <laughs> they have a passion for it, and therefore they have an opportunity. So there's this whole world out there, which I don't think we're involved with at all. And it's kind of, you can overlay this with the digital world, I think. You know, since the web's been big and what have you, all these people out there writing online stuff, Lots of different job titles. Not get many people of that nature here, I don't think. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah? Then you start thinking about well, when do people become a technical author? And we talked about the, the age thing just, just now. And, you know, no rocket science here. You go to school, college, uni, first job, second job. And then at some point after that, you kind of become a technical author by hook or by crook. Sometimes by design, not often. Most people I talk to, oh, well, I, just, I ended up doing the docs and it was all right. And yeah, and I quite enjoy it. Or oh, I yeah, just do it. That's what I do. So, yeah, it is an older demographic, certainly, where we hold a lot of CVs at 3DI. And it's typically in your 30s, if you're really lucky, <laughs> 40s, 50s, and 60s. Absolutely. Um, but the bottom line is for me, there's just no visibility in this path. No visibility of, of technical writer, technical author. Or even the other, all the other roles we talked about it. I think one of the big problems... Oh, hold on. I think one of the big problems that we have here, and having just come back from eight years in the States, I can sort of see the, the difference quite clearly. We don't have an educational system to put a technical writer on the ground straight from graduation. Yeah. You know, um, the occasional, we want a trainee... Um, and they're usually English grads or somebody who's come out of a journalistic uh, course or something like that. Yep. Um, in the States, ev every state, every university, every, every college has some kind of writing course. They do, do they? And even if you are an engineer, you have to go through a block that mm. teaches you how to write. Absolutely, and I'm we don't assuming do it I didn't put it on the slides, but I'm assuming everyone knows that the courses that were run by Sheffield and Portsmouth are no longer. So, I've got a point. Yep. I don't know if it's a valid point, but I can ask. And that is, um, I've heard it said that um, all the interesting books are written by people over 40 years old. I don't know if that applies here as well. Maybe to be a, a really good technical writer, you need to have had the first and second job. And to have the experience of what people understand, what they perceive, and to write to an audience, it takes that maturity. Maybe. I think that's, a, that's always going to be an element of that too. I think one of my issues is that there's just no opportunity. I'm over 40, obviously. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't have said that five years ago. Yeah. Which one? Which one? You choose. <laughs> um, just a quick thing on that. I mean, you might be onto something there. I could probably rattle off a list of authors who did brilliant things in their 20s, but that's kind of not the point. Um, I've, in the last five, four or five years, I've hired, I think, four pretty much brand new grads, either fresh out of uni or kind of irrelevant second jobbers, people that have been bumming around doing something not particularly career-y for a bit, but they've had some workplace experience, which has knocked the edge off them. We love those. Um, 
they're smacking it out of the park. They're fantastic authors. It's mm. I don't, and we've hired some more experienced, more mature authors that are also absolutely excellent. The ones we struggle with are the ones that have learned a bunch of bad habits that we then have to unteach them. Mm. Yeah. Now that is a problem. We find that as well. We say we've got a lot of CVs, but you know, people just can't operate to the way that 3DI wants to operate, be it you know, because they're stuck in their ways or, or they just can't write properly sometimes. Um, I, I agree with, with what's been said about the lack of university degrees and, and formal qualifications in this country at the moment, but I think one of the problems is that there are a lot of courses out there that have technical writing as a module. And the Open University does two that I can think of, one at master's level, one at undergraduate, and that's without thinking very hard. If I actually think quite hard, there's probably half a dozen I could name off the top of my head. The problem is that people don't know. They love those modules, they really enjoy doing them, <coughs> but they still don't realise when they finish them that actually I love doing that, and the job that relates to that is being a technical author. So there's that kind of mismatch between what they're doing and they love doing, and knowing that it's there is a job that involves doing that. I mean, I'm mm. trying to do it with my own students. I teach for the OU, so it's something I keep saying to them. Oh, well, if you really like the, writing the technical reports and writing the, the instructions, then you might consider this. But, you know, I'm one voice. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, and I think that's some of the issue. OK, let's just uh, wrap up a couple more slides, I think, and we can... Um, just as I said, with uh, some of the things we've done, and it's probably, you know, I think we've pretty much covered them, um, but we've been talking to uh, one or two universities, kind of not necessarily by design, but, um, and they are genuinely interested. I don't have the details, maybe it's my colleague who's doing it, and I haven't got the information from them, but one was Liverpool, University in Liverpool, and they're really interested in talking. They're going to talk to us about learning more a profession and how they can use that in their own you know, training, as it were, education to make people aware. Um, but we've also gone to, we've done what you've been doing, you know, going direct to graduates who haven't even thought about technical writing. Um, there are websites where you can post just for kind of graduate uh, leavers, as it were, and that's been um, useful to us. We've taken on a couple of people in that way. Tapping into the wider world of the associated job roles, a big bubble with all those different job descriptions in there. One of our authors came definitely from that. She was a project manager come content manager, um, you know, looking at the CVs and trying to work out, actually, they feel as though they could be a really good writer in there. Um, Presence of local area groups, we can be active around the north, west and Cambridge, um, kind of upping the profile, if you like, which I know you've done as well. That's had some benefit. And it's some kind of off-centre so stage stuff, really. Um, people who are leaving the army, recovery, rec RCS, recovery career services. Again, put, we put in a module, if you like, to make those people kind of quite talented engineers often, um, that where they can become technical writers. So there's some of the things we've dabbled at. We've not had a major push on this, but they've you know, had some success. I thought this was quite an interesting uh, point, which came out of the discussion group. Um, and the commentary around it from that meeting, I think it was an oil and gas meeting, for those of you in the know, was that actually they, they agreed that that was true of the ISTC. <laughs> Okay, right, all right, I'll try. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lovely quotation to get out there and, and get people sort of talking, That's but, what but I do. think our job is just as relevant now as it ever has been and actually more relevant. So, no, I, I don't agree with that at all. And I like knitting <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I think it was in context to what I tried to draw here where, you know, the ice, the ice tea segment, apologies, there's this whole thing going on out here, you know, and it's, there's no connection, there's no kind of crossover, it's them and us kind of thing. He's crossed over mm. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so there's, there's a few just to get the adrenaline going, really, you know, what, what can we do? Uh, is it a dry profession that will become extinct? I tend to agree with you, but I'd sort of throw it up there. Is it possible to reverse the trend? Because it's definitely getting harder. I think it is, anyway. Is it all about the ISTC doing something? Because I don't know if that's the case, then I think we've got a big problem. Um, have we missed this digital world thing, this whole kind of association with that big bubble? Why do we care? Well, I think we've worked that one out. Um, does industry care enough? I think it does. It doesn't matter. So, 
The next point is I'm going to go over there with a flip chart and I'm going to gather all your brilliant ideas of how we solve this conundrum. Is that okay? Can I just mention something to this? Yeah. Uh, I've recently left a company, a very big company, Good. that employs some 30 plus, which they call themselves technical authors. And I used to run a portal for technical authors within the company mm. and discussion groups. And the first thing I obviously asked them was, why don't you join the ISTC? Mm. Those of that had heard of it, why? What's the point? What's in it for me? These people weren't really technical authors. No. None of them had one qualification between them. They'd all come up through the engineering world, fell into writing documents, and then just suddenly call themselves a technical author because it sounds better than an engineer. Yeah. And that's 30 plus in one company. So. Okay, know, they, let's take some of those <coughs> thoughts. You want to swivel this way a little bit, that would be good. <laughs> what can be done? So, I mean, that was sort of just leading on that one for now because it's fresh in my mind. That was certainly part of the Yahoo discussion groups. There's still, I, I think, my view is that there's still a legacy view of the ISTC of how it was six, seven, eight, in beyond years ago. And that's still an issue that has got to be overcome. Is that fair to yes. put up? But the actual point is relevance of joining the ISTC and its <coughs> wide, wider appeal. Is that fair? Yeah, it's a perception. It's a perception. Yeah. Might well be this idea of the sort of slightly grubby, no girls in the treehouse, essentially, essentially gatekeeping you just trotted out there. If they're doing tech authoring, they're tech authoring. Now they might not be doing it very well, but there's nothing that's going to put people off, put people off more strongly than a kind of exclusive clubhouse mentality. They may well be crap at it. <laughs> Part of I'm, I'm Sorry. having troubling trouble figuring out what is the actual problem because if we talk about how are we going to solve this but I would like to hear what is the problem you say we are missing talent uh, you can find people who are 40 plus and are too expensive but among the people you would like to, to drag in what is missing what do they have what qualifications do they have what are they missing I, I don't think that there are people out there I'm, that, I'm not sure the problem is that there aren't the people out there it's just that when for me when you think about technical author and technical writer, you're immediately distancing yourself from this bigger community who are out there and able to do a job like technical writing. But it's, it's kind of this disconnect between the whole brand and keywords, buzzwords, which ISTC use, and I use now because I've got dragged into the blooming fold, and everyone else is out there going, who are they? Don't know them. What do they do? So, yes, yeah, it's, this, it's this wider appeal. I mean, personally, I'd like to see the ISTC open its doors up on a more not free, but broader membership basis, so it does enable people to join. Is the problem that ISTs are really for encouraging people in, or is it just that, no, that people don't know about the profession? They just haven't heard the term technical author or technical writer or content developer, um, and they'd love to do the job. Mm. If they even knew it was a thing. Look, I know, I'm in a situation in New Zealand that sounds very similar to what you've described in the UK. I know people who I've managed to draw in who work for years doing doing what we do with all many of the competencies that we have, mm. and they've never ever heard of technical communication. They've never heard of ISTC or TCDK or TCANZ. Um, and when they found out, they went excellent. Mm. And then there's a place that's dedicated to putting on workshops and seminars and, and other little yep. things that we can benefit from. So they need better visibility. That's probably the experience of a lot of graduate people have. Is that I always raise the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> How long we got, Galena? Just to. Uh, we can do this. Good, okay. We need better, better visi visibility of. And it kind of links into what I wanted to say, and that is of thinking of it as a profession. Um, I agree with. with what was said about not being elitist, and I think that's very true, that if people are doing the job, they are technical authors. However, out there in the wide world of industry, there is sometimes a perception of the level of quality that they would normally expect of a technical author, and that benchmark can be set quite low yeah. because that's the only experience they've ever had. Yeah. Mm. So then when you're trying to go in to do a really good job, they're thinking, well, 
you're only going to do what the managing director's wife did last summer or his niece did on her placement or his nephew did two years ago for us when he was on work experience. Why should we pay you that money to do it? Because that's their expectation. So is there I don't know what we can do about that. What, what is that? Is this what value we can bring? What else we can bring? Uh, whatever happened to the idea of uh, a royal charter? I know that was talked about a, a few years ago, wasn't it? The trouble with the Royal Charter, I've been... Inve oh, I'm sorry. Um, are, are people all right for us to digress? Um, I'm happy to answer the question. Yeah, sure. but it's, it it's is related, a, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been doing a bit of investigating about it. It's something that the ISTC looked into doing a while ago as a Royal Charter, but there are lots of conditions you have to meet to get one. And one of them is that the organisation requesting it has to be able to be representative of its profession. Now, that doesn't mean we have to have nearly all technical authors within us, mm. but we do have to have a big enough membership to be able to say we speak for them. That only gets us as far as the institute becoming a chartered institute. That still doesn't charter the people within it. Mm. That's another whole hurdle to go through. We would have to reinstitute some sort of qualification, some sort of accreditation of quality. The CPD ticks one of the big boxes that we now do but it's only part way there. I've got lots of ideas, but you know, as I was only kind of formally elected today, can I have time to think about it? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> and, and I then, want them and now. Then, and then I will, I will share some of the ideas once I've had time to discuss them with council, but I think it's something that we can do, to, some things we can do mm. to raise our, our concept of, of that we're providing a quality um, rather than just a service. It's a quality service that's actually making a difference. Yeah, okay. Um, Uh, two quick points. We've actually taken on three graduates this year, and I think two of them are straight out of college. One's had a previous job, and we took uh, two graduates on last year, and they've both done really well, and they're both really in, into the job. So I mm. think, you know, if you go for the right people, you can find them. So is there and a, it's actually meant doing on the graduate websites, putting a putting on there, and actually making the. Um, requirements that we want quite broad yeah so saying if you like the job then have a go at it go yeah. and send us your cv and we'll see what we can do so i'm wondering if there's yeah. some i mean i've not looked into this too deeply myself but um um you scratch on a point there there are websites that graduates go to for careers advice yeah. and what have you and whether someone like the istc or 3d or whatever can get content that they will allow to put on there and what have you so don't get more visibility things there's little things like that which don't cost much, but are quite easy to do, you might be worth looking at. Um, the other thing I wouldn't want us to do, and, and while I, I fully support the concept of qualifications and graduate and everything else, the best technical author I ever employed left school with GCSEs and nothing higher, and he was absolutely fantastic. Mm, and he okay. was the best one I ever had working for me. <coughs> so I wouldn't want to put barriers, because it wasn't just working for me, the, the difference he made to the company was tremendous. So there's that Graduate to consider as focus, well. stroke younger people. Okay. Anyone else? Can I else? turn the, um, uh, the, the thought to the sorts of people that are actually doing the job but labelling themselves some, something else? You put up quite a long list, a lot of which are in the software-y world mm -hmm. or will perceive themselves as something more to do with the software world than technical authoring. Um, one of the, the best technical authors that I've worked alongside would have regarded herself as a secretary. Right. Um, because I worked in a big consultancy, we gradually trained up secretaries who worked for us to <coughs> produce really fancy documentation and so on that, that the consultants needed for, for what they were doing and, and sort of develop them to that level of skill. But it would still be on her CV that she worked as a secretary. She just considered herself a very good secretary. Mm -hmm. And that didn't even appear on the list up there as, as the sort of people that, that you might want to appeal to. Yeah. No, yeah, quite right. I mean, how far is this? Anyone who writes a lot and likes it and is good at it to a degree. I mean, the, another idea I've had, um, and again, you know, who, who does this, I don't know, but there are loads of groups on LinkedIn, you know, and you can cross-pollinate the ISTC group with lots of other groups who probably do do a lot of writing and try and draw some attention. But that then begs the issue of the barriers to being a member. You know, and do, do you open the gates more to allow easier access to the ISTC as a kind of a... Unto mesh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't, you know, but um, 
How does everyone, does that kind of concept of opening the, the IC gates to a broader community, is, is everyone? Yeah, so but even... Yeah. So if what they're doing is explaining a scientific or technical information or they are providing instructions for it, I don't care what their job title is. Mm. They, they no, are no, doing no, the role of a technical author. I think we all agree on that, don't yeah. we? It's just it's so the visibility. To me, it's, it's kind of irrelevant, the job title. Mm. Okay. Can I suggest something, perhaps, it, uh, it's, it's not really along what we were saying, but using social media, perhaps, I don't know if LinkedIn will do what Facebook does, where you have, are you a technical author? F Ten questions you answer, and if you get six out of ten, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> because people are doing this job, and people can't, uh, don't know that, that, you know, potentially. I don't think anyone would mind adding an extra label to themselves because it opens up more opportunities. So, you know, they might call themselves a secretary when they go for a secretary's job, or they might have another CV that says technical author if they fancy working over here. You know, people apply for lots of jobs. I was just wondering whether we need to redefine what a technical author is, because I'm thinking analogous to 10 years ago, 15 years ago, in the games industry, one person designed an entire game from the concept to, to programming it. Now you have 20 different jobs in the games industry. Mm. You know, only one of those jobs is actually writing the game. All the rest is delivering everything around it, from advertising to drawings to animations, everybody has a different job, but they're all in the games industry. Maybe we need to have more specialisms in the technical writing industry, but they're still called technical authors. I know something that yeah. certainly it's counts with... technical authors, though, they're technical communicators, and so, you know, we, we should be thinking in terms, obviously, of the author community, the writer community, people like that. But we don't have any illustrators. No, exactly. There should be technical illustrators, there should be um, technical translation people. They are all communicating technical information. Um, and some of you might know that I'm on the, the committee that, um, that uh, views uh, applications to join uh, the ISTC or to regrade, to, to, to upgrade within the ISTC. And there are regular... Um, occasions when the membership of that committee have to liaise with each other to to assess a particular case um, because uh, they're not coming in and saying I'm a technical author with X years behind me they they describe the jobs that they have been doing and what we then have to to do is decide whether they are actually a technical communicator yeah maybe not in the conventional sense of author that we've been uh, uh, talking about here, but they are communicating technical information. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some really, really quite interesting conversations we've had. Mm. Um, so I, I'm, I'm happy t to think about opening the, the gates a little bit wider, but as long as we do that, that they're, they're wider, but we're not reducing standards. Mm -hmm. we, we are a professional organisation and we have to be seen as a professional organisation. If I could just elaborate on that and say thank you, you accepted my application for membership, I think, two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously thought that, although I didn't have anything about technical authoring on there, it was... But I would say my stuff is business writing and procedures and stuff like that internally and all writing specifications for websites. But maybe I'm just wondering if, if it's the paradigm, even though you said we are about technical communicators, but even there, there's a paradigm wrapped around that. I'm wondering, the, perhaps the question is, what is not technical communicating? And just to, to start that one off, I, to my mind, it's where there's a line with marketing. Because mm. in my, my, I keep looking for jobs in content strategy, and a lot of them are digital content strategy, and they're all, to me, marketing jobs, but for people using social media tools now. Yeah. So there's, there's, a, there's a shift. But, but whether it's marketing for sales, but then but that, that could be considered technical and structured too. Uh, you know, th maybe that's the, yeah, the question. Yeah, we've had
Okay. I think one of the issues we have here is is actually, do we actually want to continue? This is going to be contentious. Actually, saying we are scientific and technical communicators, we are just communicators, because half the problem, and this goes back to um, Brian's sort of big circle, little circle, is all those other jobs in there are not what people would consider scientific or technical. You know, business analysts. Every business analyst I've ever met, more or less, is a writer because that's what they're writing. They are writing mm. business procedures and processes. They do all the analysis to w in, the, in the front end, but they're still writing at the back end. So I think we probably alienate people by saying we are technical or scientific because they don't want to be technical and scientific. They want to be business. They want to be marketing. Mm. But they're just all, they're all part of the same pot, as far as I'm concerned. OK, we, we're running out of time. Um, has anyone else got anything we really think they should add to the list? Because this is really high level at the moment, obviously. If, if nothing else burning. My suggestion is that I'm aware I'm not being involved with the ISTC, but there's certainly, you know, regard... <laughs> To make any impact, the ICTC has got to be involved, but I'd like to think there's going to be volunteers. I'd certainly be happy to help, and 3DI help, you know, get the word out there and do some of this stuff. And this stuff needs a lot more thinking through. Is it possible, Alison, that you know, there's a list of priorities the ICTC wants to do in a given period of time, that this could make its way onto that list? You can. And on, on the we back of... Our, we have our big face-to-face -face annual council meeting in November when we set our strategy for the next year. Okay. So we can, we can certainly bring this to the table then. And, and I can't make any promises because I'm not going to everybody else is bringing to the table yet. Sure. But once we get to that meeting and we have a look, we can certainly have a discussion for this. And it's certainly something that was on my internal manifesto for being on the council if I wanted to raise the profile. Okay, cool. And just a quick show, who would be willing to be involved if this turned into a project to some degree or description? Yeah, so we've got some support for people to do stuff, which is a good start. <laughs> okay. Well, I think it's a balancing act. We, 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 we want more people in. We want to maintain the professionalism of the, the, the concept, but we also don't want to lose it. Mm. And we need to get people who, in, who aren't at a high standard yet to help them develop. Mm. Get to, because otherwise we never will. You know, if we shut everybody out who isn't already brilliant, mm. we'll never have anybody getting any better. Institute of what, sorry? Institute of Business and Industry. Oh, again. <laughs> this as well, and they have annual competitions for writing business documents. Yeah. Left. Okay. Right, can we <laughs> regroup? Regroup. It's left. <laughs> You've got all evening to talk about this now. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, we, we've, we've got a plan, which is good. So, um, thanks. Thanks for coming. And um, we'll take it forward and see what happens. We'll communicate what the council decide. So just very, very quick uh, reminder, please add your comments to SurveyMonkey. All feedback is welcome, and big thanks to Brian for this <laughs> conversation.